In today's consumer alert, pet boarding post pandemic for people who adopted pets during COVID. The return to travel may mean leaving their fur babies behind or traveling with them for the first time. Vicki Wynn ret retrieved some tips to help you navigate the process. Kept on a tight leash for more than two years, many families have the itch to travel again. Among them, 23 million American households who adopted a pet during COVID. So what's the best option to ensure you have a good trip and your pet is safe too? Hi. Well, the pandemic may have taught us to sit and stay at home, but as travel resumes, we humans are going to have to learn a few new tricks, like the questions to ask and what to consider when choosing a boarding facility for our beloved pets. With 71% of Americans expected to travel this year exceeding pre-pandemic levels, those who have pets may look to facilities like New York City's Dogma. What do you do here at Dogma? We are second home for the pups. Dogma founder June Takama says before an overnight stay, each pup should stay for the day to ensure the dog likes the facility. How can you tell if your dog had a good time at this place? If they're um, not having a good appetite after going home and their behavior is different, they're not as friendly, they're telling you that I did not enjoy the stay. What kinds of questions should you ask of a boarding facility that you're considering? I think most important thing is is all the dogs are neutered and spayed. Uh, another thing is uh, where would they be sleeping? A lot of the place freak the dogs at night, but here at Dogma, we believe in cage reboarding. Pet owners should also ask whether the facility remains staffed overnight. Here, dogs can snuggle in an actual bed with a human. How many dogs will sometimes try to sleep with a staff member overnight? I think the record is probably eight dogs. Additionally, Takama advises pet parents to ask about vaccination requirements and feeding times. Also, ask how many potty breaks, how many opportunities for exercise and human interaction. Also, provide the facility with specific information about your pet, including any medications or dietary restrictions. And when it comes to fire safety, experts say think about the same precautions you want in place at your own home. They should ask, what's the emergency plan if something happens? Do they have fire alarms? Do they have smoke alarms? What are they going to do in the event of an emergency? Look for sprinklers if the facility doesn't offer around-the-clock supervision. But maybe you want to take your little ray of sunshine along for the ride. Whether you're planning to take the car or fly, it's always safest for your pet to be in a carrier. And if you plan to take to the friendly skies, make sure that carrier is small enough to fit underneath an airplane seat. Before you travel, let your pet get used to the carrier by leaving it out and open at home so they can explore it on their own. When flying with a pet, expect to pay a fee of $95 to $125 each way depending on the airline. And you'll want to try and book a nonstop flight to minimize travel time, reserve a window seat to avoid commotion in the aisle, and ahead of the travel, schedule a checkup with your veterinarian to make sure your fur baby is ready to embark. They're not your everyday competitors, but they're some of the toughest and cutest. More than 70 bulldogs went tearing down the racetrack in Minnesota, each of them trying to earn a spot in the championship race later this year in September. The last time spectators enjoyed bulldog racing at Canterbury was before the pandemic. If you like to order tuna melts from diners, we'll show you how you can make the ultimate recipe at home. That's next at noon.